What's up guys, welcome back for another video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be adding to my Raptor 700 maintenance series. Uh, we have quite a few videos up on the channel from an oil change to chain adjustment to uh, a parking brake adjustment, several others. But today we're gonna to be doing a valve clearance adjustment on my 2014 Yamaha Raptor 700. So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you guys through the whole process from start to finish on this Yamaha Raptor 700. But before we get started, I do wanna go over why adjusting your valves is important. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be taking my valve train apart on this quad, and I don't have an example to show you guys, but I'll throw up a diagram on the screen at least so you guys can get a picture or at least uh, an idea of what I'm talking about. But what it comes down to is everything in an engine wears over time. So um, on the diagram, I'll throw up on the screen right now, uh, there's a little piece called a rocker arm and you'll see the valve. And so every time that rocker arm actuates the valve and opens the valve, that system wears over time and in turn that wears the components so we need to adjust those components to, I guess, keep them in spec. Alright, so before we get started I also want to go over the tools that you're going to need to do your valve adjustment. The most important tool that you'll need that most of you don't have is a feeler gauge. Hopefully, I'm gonna try to get this so you guys can see it in the camera. Um, this is just a feeler gauge. I'll put a link in the description for this one. I got it off Amazon. It was literally like seven bucks. But you'll need this to do your valve adjustment. As well as you'll need um, just a regular set of sockets and Allen wrenches to take your plastics off. Uh, a needle nose pliers will also be helpful. And um, throughout the video, if I miss any tools that you'll need, I'll throw them in. All right, so we have the fairings off the quad. Um, if you hear anything in the rest of the video, a storm just rolled in, so we have some thunder and rain outside. But anyways, fairings are off the quad. Next thing we have to do is remove the gas tank. We do have to remove the gas tank. It's one, two, three, four bolts over there. And uh, we do have to remove the fuel line right here and electrical, electrical connector there because we need to get at our intake valves, which are right here by the intake and our exhaust valves, which are under this cover, of course, by the exhaust. So I guess this red piece just slides out like that. Hopefully I'm not gonna leak a bunch of fuel everywhere. I'm gonna try to do this quick. Nah, hardly anything. All right, so now that the tank is removed, this plastic piece looks like it's in the way. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and lift that up like that because our valves are right here. So that shouldn't be a problem. Before we start messing with our valves, there's one more very important thing that we need to do. We need to get our engine to top dead center. That means uh, when the piston is at the topmost position in its stroke. So let me show you guys how to do that. So like I mentioned, we have to get our engine to top dead center so our valves are in the right position when we go to adjust them. To get the engine to top dead center, we need to remove these two bolts, open, take this cover off, and um, we're going to be rotating our crankshaft by removing uh, this cover right here. So let's go ahead, remove this, and remove this. My cover seems to be a little stuck on there. I've just gotta break the seal and it'll pop right off. Just be very careful you don't damage your seal in the process. There it is. We're also gonna to wanna to remove this one right here as well. That's gonna help us, well it's gonna show us when this turns around to top dead center as well as we're gonna look up here. Um, there's an O-ring on that. I just lost mine, so be careful not to lose yours. So now that we have that removed, we're gonna take a 22 millimeter socket. That's a tool that you're probably gonna need for this. Otherwise, you can just put it in gear and rotate your wheels, and that'll turn you know your whole drivetrain as well. Um, but this is a little bit easier. Um, so let's go ahead and turn this counterclockwise. We're in neutral. Okay, so there's the engine just turned over. <laughs> it's probably easier if you, now we're on the compression stroke, so our valve should be closed. Let's bring it to top dead. I just felt it click over. So that's top dead center. Let me go ahead and show you what top dead center looks like. So, whoop, there's the camera. So, top of the cylinder head right there, and then there's the line on your cam sprocket or whatever you wanna call it. And then down here, um, let me see if you guys can, okay, there you go. You can see the line down at your other window right here. So of course the next step is to remove the intake valve cover. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so there are our intake valves. You can see the rocker arm right here. 
our two intake valves right here and the two screws that we'll um, be seeing what our clearance is in between the top of the valve and the bottom of that screw. So I wanna mention one more thing about top dead center. How you're gonna know you're at top dead center is there's just gonna be a little bit of play in between, if you grab your rocker arm here and move it up and down, there should just be a little bit of play in between, uh, you should just feel in, be in between the top of your valves and those screws. If you have a lot of play, that means you're not at top dead center and your valves are open. So make sure there's just a little bit of play and that's how you properly check your valve clearance. So now for the easy part, let's go ahead and start adjusting our valves. So the valve clearance for a Raptor 700 is 0 0.09 millimeters to 0.13 millimeters. So what I have here are my feeler gauges. I'm gonna start out with the smallest one I have, which is a, a 0.127, which is basically 13. So let's check if this one goes and then we'll go up from there. Um, like I said, the max spec is 0.13, so um, we can't go over 0.13. So let's take our smallest one, a 0.13, and slide it on top of the valve and under the, uh, the tappet screw and see if it goes. I'm having trouble here. So there it is right there. So that one goes. That is a 0.13, so let's go up from there. We might actually have to... Um, tighten that tappet screw and tighten our valves. So this is a six thou or 0.15 millimeter feeler gauge. Let's see if this one goes. Um, oh yeah, this one also goes. So yep, we're definitely gonna have to tighten our valve here. Jeez, that's actually pretty loose. Let's go up another one. See how much we have to tighten that one. All right, so this is a 0.18 millimeter feeler gauge. Let's see if this one goes. This one does not go. So that is, I guess, good. Um, we still need to tighten that one. Let's go ahead and check our other valve. So let's go ahead and start the process over. Here's our 0.13 or 0.127, same thing. Feeler gauge, 5 thou. That one goes, you guys can see that. Let's go up to 0.15, see if this one goes. So that one does not go. So we definitely need to tighten this one down, and I think I'm gonna tighten this one just a hair. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how to do that now. So how we're gonna adjust our valves is we're gonna take a wrench, loosen this nut while holding our the top of the valve just like that with the needle nose. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's go ahead and loosen that nut up. Holy crap, that's tight. Oh, there it is. So now that the nut is loose, let's go ahead and place the correct feeler gauge in there. This is the point um, 13 basically feeler gauge. Let's get that in there. And then what I'm gonna do is just tighten down that tappet screw just like that. And that should give us, now we know that we're at our 13, um, our tolerance. So tighten that up and tighten our nut. It's basically just a little bit out of spec, not too bad. And now it is a snug fit. And just to be sure, let's go ahead and try the 15. And the 15 does not go anymore, so that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and do our other one. This is that 15, let's just check it again. And the 15 goes, so this one needs to be tightened as well. All right, so I have my nut loosened, I have the 13 in there, and let's go ahead and tighten down this tappet screw onto that feeler gauge so it's tight. And then let's go ahead and tighten that nut. All right, so I have my two valves adjusted to 0.13 millimeter clearance. What I'm gonna do now and what you should do is rotate your crank maybe like two times, check them again just to make sure everything checks out. So let's go ahead and rotate the crank counterclockwise and watch our valves actuate. There they went down. Going down some more. And they came back up. And let's Rotate to top dead center, get our line to the very top. All right, so we just rotated the crank. Let's check them again. There's that 13. And 13, tight 13s on both. So I'm good with that. All right, so we have the intake side done. Let's go ahead and clean the surface, clean the cover, replace the cover. That side is good to go. The only thing left to do <laughs> 
is the exhaust side, which is right here. It's gonna be the exact same process, four bolts, exact same thing as the intake. And I don't think I'm gonna show that to you guys just because it's the exact same thing and it's really hard to film. I know I said that I was gonna show you the whole process from start to finish, but adjusting them is the exact same process and it's really hard to film. The clearances are different, so I'm gonna correct myself on the screen if I'm wrong, but the exhaust clearances are 0.16 to 0.20 millimeters. And I'm pretty sure that's right, but I'll correct it on the screen if I'm wrong. So I just finished adjusting the exhaust valves and they were a little loose as well. I think one measured 0.22 and the other was like about the same. So we tightened those up to uh, 0.18, right in, in between the spec of 0.16 and 0.2 millimeters. So we are good to go. Just want to reiterate one more time, after you adjust your valves, make sure you rotate your crank like 10 times or so counterclockwise and then recheck your exhaust valves just like we did with our intake and verify that everything's good to go. The only thing left to do is put the quad back together the way everything came off of it and unfortunately I have to do that off camera for you guys because I'm on my last camera battery. This is the third battery in three hours. With filming everything takes like three times as long because I'm trying to show you guys all the details and exactly how to do everything. But if you guys have any comments or questions just leave them below. I'm no expert, but I'll try to do my best to answer everybody's questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a difficult one to make, so I'll see you guys next Saturday.